Hi, James here. Um, in this video I want to talk to you about a tone arm on a Technics turntable. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions and emails, uh, people asking can I do a video on how to change the tone arm on a Technics SL Mark II. Uh, now I'm going to do a video now and explain how to change it because there's, well, there's a difficult and there's an easy way of doing it and I'd like to think I'm going to show you the easy way. Um, now it's fairly straightforward, but I hope I'm not going to make it look easy, and I hope you're going to understand, you know, where I'm coming from. But let me move the camera in, and I'll show you a close-up of this one. I'll show you what you've got to do first off to be able to get the tone arm off. Well, now there is a couple of ways which you can change the tone arm. The bit I'm going to show you how to change today is this bit here. So this bearing assembly and the actual tube here. Um, that all comes off as one unit, and you can just change it over does require a little bit of soldering but it's fairly straightforward. Um, if it's the tone arm that's the problem it's fine you can just change that over but if you've got a lot of problems on this part let's say I don't know the anti-skate doesn't work, the lifter doesn't work, the ra razor and dropper doesn't work and the tone arm's broken then I would advise you just change the whole thing. Um, now I'll show you how you can do that in this video. Um, first of all though, you have got to tip the turntable upside down to get to that. So um, what you need to do first off is take off the slip mat, my bit of paper, and take off the platter. Basically just take off anything that's um, going to get broken or that's going to fall off if you turn it upside down. So take the cartridge and the, he the um, counterweight off. Sorry. Right, you're best actually just unplugging all of this because uh, if you want to pick this up and walk away with it then all you're probably going to do if it's all plugged in is end up dragging your mixer and your other turntable off the desk with you. So um, make sure you unplug all that. You've got to flip this upside down and um, what I said to do last time or in my other videos I've said put a cushion on top and flip it over but I'm actually trying something new this time. I've got a bean bag on the floor down there and I'm going to flip it over on top onto a bean bag. So um, bear with me, and let me move the camera. Right now on the floor I've got my furry bean bag. Now in case you're wondering, I'm not into furry things like this. My sister gave this to me years ago, honestly. Anyway, it's going to be a good cushion. So now I can just flip that over onto there and it's a nice soft thing for it to sit on and it's not going to damage anything. Right, okay, let me put the camera on the mic stand and then I'll... Uh... Right, now the first thing you've got to do to get this bottom off is to screw the feet off. Right, then you've got to take all these screws out. Now there's a link in the description to uh, another video of mine where I actually go into a bit more detail about how to take these screws out. So um, if you're in doubt, just uh, nip to that and have a look at that. Right, now all the screws are out, you can go ahead and take this rubber piece off. Right, now that's off, you can just actually take this plate off and start working on the tone arm, but I'm going to show you an easier way. Now, let me take the camera off the uh, stand and I'll show you. Now, on the bottom of one of these turntables, you've got this plastic piece here. Now, if you look around the edge, okay, you've got a screw there, a screw there, a screw there, a screw there, you've got two screws there, you've got a screw there, and two screws there again and you've also got a screw in there okay now don't bother with these ones okay these two here okay because they all they do is hold the hinge on so don't bother with those two but you want to remove the rest of those now let me put the camera back on the stand and I'll put markers on the screen so you can see where they are right now I'm sorry if you can't see this very well but all the um, screws if you can see them are marked now the ones you've got to remove Right, now when you take the screws out, make sure you put them somewhere safe. Right, now if you've taken out all the right screws, this bottom piece should just lift off. Now, if it doesn't, then uh, go around and double check, you might have missed a screw. Now, the power lead doesn't matter, but you've got to pull the audio lead through this hole here. Right, now, this is the bottom of the turntable without that plastic piece on. I've actually got a lamp here, it's pretty hard to see this, but you can see there's a screw there, a screw there, and a screw there. If you can see that, there you go. So there's a screw there, a screw there, and another one under there. So these three screws are the only thing holding this tone arm assembly in. Um, so before you take these screws out though, 
Um, on the other side of this tone arm assembly, you've got this little skinny wire. Uh, you could have missed that because it's quite hard to see, but it goes on to this screw here which holds the pitch fader on. So before you take out the tone arm assembly, you've got to take this screw out of here and take off that little earth wire. Otherwise you'll pull it through and basically just pull the earth wire off. Right, now you can actually take out these um, three screws that hold this in. That's it. Right, now once you've taken those screws out, this tone arm assembly should be loose. So if you lift up the whole turntable, okay, that should just fall through the hole and you can pull the audio leads through. Right, now that is now the tone arm assembly. So let's take this over to the bench and we can work on it. Right, now this is the entire tone arm assembly. Okay, you can see you've got the anti-skate and everything on there. Now, if there's more than one thing that's gone wrong with the tone arm, so let's say the tone arm and the anti-skate and the razor mechanism and the height adjustment have all gone wrong, then I would suggest you just replace this whole unit, okay? Even maybe from a second-hand one that is working. But if it's just the tone arm that's gone wrong, you can replace it a lot easier when this unit is out of the turntable. Now, even though this is out and it's less likely to get broken, I would still recommend that you do that and have it on a cushion or something soft. Right, now what you want to do now is take this plate off. So first of all, you need to take the two screws out of this um, plastic piece that holds in the audio cables. Right, now once you've got the screws out, uh, to get this plastic piece off, there's two clips. There's one on either side, so you've just got to get those off, and then the plastic piece comes in half like that. And make sure you put that aside and leave it in a safe place. And not just drop it like I just did. Right, now next thing you need to do is take these two screws out here to take this bottom plate off. So I'm going to do that now. Don't forget to put the screw somewhere safe. Right, now this bottom plate should just come straight off now, like that. And you can just leave that dangling on the wire, or you can take it right off if you want. Right, now in there that looks pretty complicated, but um, let me just get the camera a bit closer up and I'll show you that it's not actually that complicated. Right, now, you've got a lot of things in here, but as you can see here, you've got a circuit board. Now, to remove the tone arm, you've actually got to take this circuit board off. But what I would say to do is not actually take the circuit board right off, okay? Now, this screw here has an earth lead attached to it, and it's actually a longer screw than that one. So take this screw right out first of all. You can see I've loosened it. It's actually a really long screw. So if you take that one right out, and the screw on the other side, don't actually take this one right out, but just loosen it off. Right, now what you can do is just move that circuit board out of the way and get to where you want to get to. Now the reason why I say don't take this right off is because can you see here, you've got these little wires here and they're very skinny and very delicate and you don't want to take the circuit board right off otherwise the weight of this circuit board and these audio cables are going to be dangling on these wires and they could probably snap. So just move this out of the way. Right now in there, can you see there's um, two screws in there that's directly underneath the circuit board. You've got one inside that white circle there and one next to it. Now, if you take those two screws out, which I'm going to do now, that is all that's holding the tone arm on. So let me take these screws out and I'll show you what I mean. Right, now I've just taken those two screws out and now I've taken those out. You can see they're not in their place. The tone arm, this bit, should just come straight off like that. Now before you take this off make sure that your anti-skate mechanism is set to zero okay before you take this out otherwise when you put it back on again this, the anti-skate mechanism might not work because the spring won't be in the right place now when you actually take the tone arm off I take the armrest off as well sorry see you can take that off but you can see there's those little skinny wires that are holding that on okay now you've got to now desolder those skinny wires off of there, off of that circuit board. Now, I'm not going to actually do this, but you can see now that once you've desoldered those, let me uh, move the camera out a little bit, 